I'm on the streets of Berlin where we are about to start our journey into Israel's famous high-tech industry. We'll begin with the Bewege van, this new rideshare phenomenon in Berlin. So buckle your safety belts. Soon, in two minutes, we are going to uh, get into the Berlkoning, which is a super interesting collaboration between VIA, which provides the technology and the algorithm, which is an Israeli company, and BVG, which is the public um, uh, transportation, and Daimler. about Israel Startup Nation. Is that hype still justified and what makes it? Startup way? Nation is so 2018 right? because we've graduated wow. out of Startup Nation. First of all, we gotta give a shout out. We're not just sitting in Tel Aviv, you're sitting at Memphis Burger, the best burger in Tel Aviv, period. Free plug. I'm a little bit tired of the whole Startup Nation thing because what's a startup? Startups, you build a venture and then you sell it, but you don't let it come to fruition, you don't let it mature. And that's not what Israel's about anymore. There's endless unicorns, billion dollar companies, sustainable businesses, Wix and Waze and Mobileye and Iron Source and uh, um, Orcam and Apps Flyer and similar, I can, go on, I can go on for hours. And so we're not about building startups, we're about building large sustainable businesses. And the unique thing that I think today uh, is true that wasn't once true is that Israel used to dominate in the cybersecurity space, right? We were known because of the military, we always led the way in cyber, but today, there's pretty much not a vertical of technology in which Israel is not dominant. And when I say dominant, I mean either number one or number two in the world. And you, whether it's drones, mobility, transportation, enterprise, big data, it, the works. Oh. You want to know what I'm ordering? Yes, an egg on top of the burger. So it's all about being spontaneous. Yeah. Well, that's so. part of the secret of success here. Like, I don't think it's going to happen in Germany. That was a good segue. The world's largest R&D center for autonomous transportation is being built in Jerusalem right now as we speak. So Israel's leading the way. Obviously, Mobileye was acquired for $15.3 billion by Intel. That's a Jerusalem-based company. And now their founders are, after they gave eyes to cars, now they're giving eyes to people who are visually impaired and can't see or blind. But Orcam, another billion dollar company that has a device you put on your glasses and can tell you who's walking towards you. You can let can, lets you point at a newspaper and reads the newspaper to you if you can't see. It's, it's remarkable. going on in Jerusalem. So the first thing is that Tel Aviv and Jerusalem are not that far apart. We talk about them as if they're two entirely different systems, but they're really only about 45 minutes to an hour drive from one another. And right here we're accelerating 52 teams from all over the world with great innovation that's going to change the way that we do business, save lives, teach one another in the future. The network here is, is very uh, strong and uh, there's access to everything a startup needs, uh, both in terms of funding, um, different resources, legal uh, support, accelerators. There's a, a very big network of, of uh, accelerators in this country. Many people have been there and done that and, and you can get access to these people quite easily. Now we're at the Kudam where we're meeting Nate and Molly. Nate's German-Israeli, Molly's Israeli, and they now live in Berlin, and they're very active in trying to bridge the gaps between the German and Israeli high-tech ecosystem. Yes, Israel is absolutely an amazing startup nation that built fantastic technologies, and we are the best ambassadors for Israel. We live in Berlin, my sister lives in Silicon Valley, and, and you see that a lot of Israelis are not in Israel anymore. So if you have the opportunity and you need big money and you want to grow fast and you need a big market, you just leave and that's the problem. So let's see where it will be in 20 years. Okay. Hi. I think Israel is still a startup nation. Um, at least when it comes to the brand, you know, outside of Israel, and I speak mainly for Germany, there's still a very strong appeal to uh, to the Israeli startup uh, vibe.
every single multinational, without exception, has core teams here on the ground. So if you look at Facebook, they have a, you know, a massive office both on Rothschild Boulevard and in Sarona where they're building really core elements of their user experience here in Tel Aviv. You look at Google, the whole, did you mean this? When you write something in Google and you spell it wrong and it says, did you mean this? That's being built in Israel. Android, most of Android is built in Israel. You look at Apple, this is the iPhone 10. This face ID on top that recognizes my face, that's prime sense technology, an Israeli company that Apple acquired. Microsoft Ventures started in Israel. But then you also look at like capital. You look at money being poured into Israel from both Silicon Valley, from New York, from LA, from Asia. Look at Alibaba. Just take Alibaba as one example. Alibaba has one partnership in the world with a venture capital, a venture capital firm. One. And this is what's with Jerusalem Venture Partners. I see a lot of collaboration, you know, Daimler, BMW, Volkswagen, all of them, like I told you, uh, open their hubs or so they have a scouting people, scouting for new uh, startups in the ecosystem, in the Israeli ecosystem, and also in the cybersecurity companies that like insurance companies, uh, financial institutions that are looking for like the next uh, cybersecurity company. First, you see more and more German companies opening R&D centers or scouting centers for innovation in Israel. Um, I think that at least half of the big um, DAX 30 companies in Germany have uh, working relations with, uh, with Israel. Some acquired Israeli companies. So it's definitely uh, a trend that is um, becoming more and more common. And we, we do actually get start getting more requests from Israeli startups looking for funding in, uh, in Germany. So I do believe that this is also something that, uh, that you will see more and more German VCs investing in, in Israeli companies. And always the first target market was the U.S., because of the cultural difference, um, similarities, because of the language. There are many reasons that Israelis feel very comfortable uh, with the Americans. And uh, since I moved here, I've learned a lot about the German culture. And, you know, it is true that there are cultural differences, but I think that uh, it's more of a myth than a reality. And what we're trying to do at the Israeli Trade Center um, is to actually bring startups here and to show them um, the local industry and to give that, um, to open that door for them to realize that Germany can be a very interesting strategic market with uh, maybe less competition than they find in the U.S. market. Three and a half or four hours, you know, a plane, one hour time difference, and many of them really speak English quite well. So we've had some um, entrepreneurs who've applied to the program from Germany. We've hosted delegations from Cologne and from Berlin here at Mass Challenge. We'd love to think about ways to better connect. There's no doubt that Germany is a unique um, unique home for Israeli startups specifically because it feels like there's a lot of similarities. There's a young vibe, it's really in the center of activities in Europe, and there's so much potential for growth based on the companies that are already in Germany. So the German institutions, whether it's in the automotive sector, the manufacturing sector, and the industrial sector, that are right now looking to connect with Israeli innovators. And we know that Israel can um, I would say develop and provide fantastic smart technologies and Germany is amazing um, infrastructure, industry, money-wise and, and also brain-wise, um, the, the connections are natural. I think the German companies and corporate, if they wish to work with Israeli startups, they need to understand that Israelis like to see, to see things moving very, very fast. They don't have the patience to wait for long processes and to wait a lot of time until something will happen because in a way, in a startup life, the life cycle is very, very short. Since I'm here, I learn how to be patient, you know? The, the big things are taking time. It's not like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, everything will be okay. That's not the right way to, to manage business. So as an Israeli, we have a lot to learn, but as a German, we also have a lot to, you know, be much more open and, and, and test things faster. I, 
uh, the military plays a major role in it for sure. We learn, you know, the military, the IDF is a very innovative body, very. Uh, there's also the society here, or the government here that plays a major role, the innovation authority that invests in companies equity free, so they basically give them money. It's beyond that. I think it's a cultural thing, right? I'm reading a book by Indal Ariely right now. It's like a very well-known entrepreneur. So that's totally typical. That's peak Tel Aviv right there. Just people walking by and screaming. Indal Ariely is a well-known entrepreneur. She's writing a book called Chutzpah. How Chutzpah played a major role in Israel's, uh, you know, uh, role as a, um, in a, you know, in, a leader in innovation. We believe in the word Chutzpah. The Chutzpah. That, uh, Germans, you said that. <laughs> that uh, sometimes Israel, uh, Germans don't have, like, you know, to also, and also the, the courage to fail. So it's a huge part of it, in, especially in the startups, the, the try, the try, the try, and if they fail, they don't care, so they try again. I think the fact that Israelis are flexible and relatively risk tolerant means that they are looking for innovation, they're happy to try. Um, and that's really what creates a culture where you can launch a startup. You look at, you know, the culture of failure, right? In most societies, especially in Asia, you fail. Not only are you not going to try again, but literally, you kill yourself. Yes. Here, it's, it's big in your voice. Yeah, and here, like, your failure is like a notch on your belt. It's like, oh, I failed four times? Great. Because you learn from failure, right? This is a perfect place to interview on a hot day. <laughs> exactly. It's air conditioned. Let's show Ooh. the camera now. What? That was really fast too. Look at that. No vibe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, That's what bacon. I'm talking about. That's not bacon. That is not bacon. <laughs>